Let's go. And we will see. Hello and welcome to this beautiful Wednesday, a midweek day, the ninth day of August 2023, and this is your live boy today. Be strong in faith. Yes, that's the topic for your live boy today. Be strong in faith. We'll be reading from the epistle of Paul, the apostle, to the Romans in chapter 4, and it's the entire chapter we're reading. So, very long passage it is, so let's go very quickly now. What then shall we say about Abraham, a forefather, according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now to one who works... His wages are not reckoned as a gift, but as his due. And one who does not walk, but trusts him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is reckoned as righteousness. So also David pronounces a blessing upon the man to whom God reckons righteousness apart from works. Blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven, and those whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord will not reckon his sin. Is this blessing pronounced only upon the circumcised, or also upon the uncircumcised? We say that faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness. How then was it reckoned to him? Was it before or after he had been circumcised? It was not after, but before he was circumcised. He received circumcision as a sign or a seal of the righteousness which he had by faith while he was still uncircumcised. The purpose was to make him father of all who believe without being circumcised and who thus have likewise the father of the circumcised, but also follow the example of the faith which our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. The promise to Abraham and his descendants that they should inherit the world did not come through the law. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, Faith is null, and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share in the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope 
that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness, but the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for us also, it will be reckoned to us who believe in him that raised from the dead Jesus Christ our Lord, who was put to death for our trespasses and raised for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He was raised for our justification. You need to remember that our topic yesterday was justification by faith one and tomorrow is going to be justification by faith two so what is it that is required of you for the justification faith so you therefore need to be strong in the faith you've had the story and you've read the story of abraham and sarai in times past or if you have not let me remind you Abraham was 100 years old. The wife, Sarah, was about 90 years old. So can you imagine two people like that being told that they would still have children and would be father of many nations? And it did come to pass. I mean, you can imagine a 100 years old man. That's even workable somehow. But a 90-year-old woman, hey, come on. That's impossible ordinarily except by extraordinary faith and the pronouncement of God and the work of God. And I pray for you today. Is there anything that has been called impossible concerning you? Maybe yourself, your child, your spouse, your parents, your business, your studies, your situation, your aspirations. I declare to you today that if you have faith, if you are strong in faith, the Lord will do it in the mighty name of Jesus. You will have a testimony very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. But you need to be strong in faith. Even if it seems impossible, just be determined. I have so many stories of situations that in my heart I will say, well, now this is impossible. I don't know how I'm going to do it. But somehow, something just works out. There was a case of an examination that I had to take for one reason or the other because of a lot of distractions I had not read anything absolutely nothing and when it was time to go take the examination I got to the entrance and I told myself hey you know nothing so what are you going inside there to write but I had faith I took courage I walked in I talked to the invigilator I said, hey, I'll be in the next room, if you permit me. I've not seen the question paper. Just allow me some 15, 20 minutes. Oh, he said, I can even give you up to 30 minutes. It's your choice. I said, will you allow me back into the exam hall? He said, yes. And so I went out and read a few things. I walked back into the examination hall, and I did the examination. And to the glory of God, even my grade was one of the best in the class. And, I mean... To me, that was being strong in faith because I know one or two other people that walked away from the examination and said, no, there is no way I can make it. You need to be strong in faith. I have so many other testimonies, but our time is fast spent. But if you have faith, the Lord is going to do great wonders in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, I need to invite you to begin to take that step of faith, to begin to walk up the ladder of faith that it may become really strong enough to draw the hand of God to move situations that seem impossible to you. And that's first giving your life to Christ. Are you set for that experience? Now say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, 
I want to begin a new life in you from today. I have been a sinner. I plead that you forgive me of my sins. I declare that you are Lord and Savior over my life today. And I pray that you accept me too. Begin to teach me so that I can be strong in faith and move your hand to do things. I pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you just said that prayer, welcome to the household of faith. You need to find a Bible-believing church where that faith can grow stronger and stronger by the day. So I'm inviting you to the Anglican Church Uruki Estate Extension Oshobo. Join us for now in the Chapel Hall of the Olive Branches, Midland High Schools, Oyikon and Gokyumibod Drive, Uruki Estate Extension Oshobo. You can join us on a Tuesday in the late afternoon, 5 o'clock for our midweek service. Or if it's a Sunday, you want to come join us. Come 9 o'clock in the morning or a few minutes before 9 so we can start the service together at 9 o'clock. And looking at the screen very well, you can see some bank account details. We want to move to our own purpose-built site. And therefore, we are asking that you join us in faith and also join us in the manifestation by partnering with us. Drop something in that bank account detail today and the Lord will impute it to you for righteousness, just like it was for Abraham, and it will be well with you. And as you go out today, say this prayer. Say, Lord, rekindle in me the power of unrelenting faith to access my rightful place in your kingdom from today. I pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go out today, be strong in faith, and the Lord will do it. God bless you. You are good.